Even climate scientists cannot agree on how to compare different greenhouse gases. But I'll try to give you some idea of the discussion. Greenhouse gases are removed from the atmosphere in very different ways. Here, the blue line is carbon dioxide, showing that in the first 30 years, the oceans and vegetation draw down about half the emissions. Then the remaining is slowly removed by rock weathering. Carbon dioxide has a lasting legacy. After 1,000 years, 10% of the emissions still remain in the atmosphere. This is carbon dioxide's sting in the tail. Methane, in green, is very different. Most of the emissions are oxidised from the atmosphere within 10 to 12 years. But while it's in the atmosphere, methane is many times more warming than carbon dioxide. There is also a lasting carbon dioxide residue from methane that, that's not shown here. Nitrous oxide in purple is an extremely powerful greenhouse gas and is removed over about 100 years at a fairly constant rate. So how do we compare warming from these gases with hugely different time frames? The most common way of comparing them is using a measure called global warming potential which is simply the warming or radiator forcing of each gas compared to carbon dioxide for any given time. In this case, global warming potential for methane is the area under the curve for methane compared to the area under the curve for carbon dioxide. This is a graph from the IPCC report of the warming caused by a kilogram of each gas over time. AGWP on the right is the absolute global warming potential, the amount of warming from each gas without comparing it to other gases. Note that the methane warming shown in orange is one-tenth of the actual warming from methane, just to fit it on the same graph. So the warming from methane is ten times higher than the line shown here. Quite arbitrarily, without any good basis in science, the IPCC has chosen 100-year global warming potentials as the standard for comparing gases. When you hear the term carbon dioxide equivalent, that is done using 100-year global warming potentials. So on the left, when we compare methane to carbon dioxide for a 100-year time frame, methane has a global warming potential of 28. But if we compare the warming over 20 years, methane is 84 times more warming than carbon dioxide. Right there is the major point of contention. So when the FAO report that livestock is responsible for 14.5% of global warming, they use this figure, 100 year global warming potentials. However, that averages methane's warming over 100 years, which is 10 times longer than methane actually lasts in the atmosphere. So it's almost like buying a $10,000 car that lasts 10 years, but justifying the cost by saying, but that's only $100 a year over 100 years. That doesn't make sense. Nor does it make sense for carbon dioxide, because we know that after 1,000 years, 10% of the emission is still in the atmosphere. So 100 years is way too short to measure the warming from carbon dioxide. It does make sense for, for nitrous oxide because that lasts 100 years. But this is why comparison is so contentious and it makes a huge practical difference. In Australia, in the Beyond Zero Emissions Land Use Plan, we found that ruminant livestock were responsible for 34% of national emissions using 100-year global warming potentials, that's including the uncounted gases, but 50%, not 35, 50% of national emissions using 20-year global warming potentials, a big practical difference. A carbon tax would make a huge difference to the price of red meat and dairy, even using 100-year global warming potentials. So if we were to use 20-year GWPs, this tax would more than double. New Zealand is struggling with this metrics now in its bid to be carbon neutral by 2050. 
Producers are objecting to even using 100-year GWPs, arguing for other metrics that won't hurt their profits. So this discussion is not merely academic, and when Salish Rao produces a position paper arguing that livestock are responsible for 87% of global warming, he's using 20-year global warming potentials. The arguments for using 20-year GWPs that amplify the warming from methane are strong. Firstly, dangerous climate change is with us now, and methane is the only gas that can slow warming in the next few years or decades. The only gas. Stop methane emissions now, and we will feel the impact within months. Secondly, steep reductions in methane emissions will buy us decades more time to get carbon dioxide emissions under control. Third, even if we stop carbon emissions entirely, business as usual methane emissions alone will drive us into one and a half, two degrees warming, dangerous global warming. So which is correct? Conventional 100-year global warming potentials or 20-year? Technically, both are correct. But if you are interested in warming 100 years from now, the conventional 100-year global warming potentials is correct. But if you're interested in warming in the next two decades, GWP20 is the one I would choose.